इस्लामाबाद विद मी I have the very amazing Miss Maheen Jafri, and I happen to be Shahzad Hasan Khan. Hello, Maheen. How are you doing today? Hello, Shahzad. How are you doing today? Well, I think I'm doing fantastic. On top of my energy, got enough sleep last night as well. And you know, whenever I'm working, I just feel blessed. And every single day, ladies and gentlemen, this is one thing which I want every Muslim to at least practice, and that is that please make sure that you have a heart full of gratitude. And it's for exactly. everybody. It's global. You know, if you're going to have a heart full of gratitude, you will be able to do more in life as well, and, and it is important I would, equally. I would like to add something. I feel very elated and patriotic today because Pakistan has proven itself. It was such a huge success, like it just not hosted the 48th OIC uh, Conference of Foreign Ministers, uh, but also uh, it happened. Uh, the coincidence was it happened on the uh, Pakistan, Pakistan Day. Yes. This was amazing. I think it's great, mine. But you know, I have another message, and I think on a very different tangent, and it's because of the fact that for all of us, you know. 220 million people ladies and gentlemen we really need to kind of not be pakistani for only two days may it be 23rd march or 14th of august i think we really need to behave as a nation throughout the year and make sure that we continuously give something back to the community and society where people who around us who whatever they can do and whatever you can do for them we really need to equally uh, contribute and make sure that whenever we talk about pakistan it just does not need to be on the 23rd march only or 14th of august where we happen to be uh, you know very patriotic and nationalist but of course we'll happy on the achievement said uh, i mean obviously we are happy on the achievement which is why i never touched upon the achievement part of it or the bit of it as well but for each and every individual out there ladies and gentlemen it's people like me you Mahin and everybody who make a country or a nation stronger and a better as well, and that to every single day we need to take smaller steps. But now, Mahin, I think what we really need to do is that we really need to kind of make the world aware of what's happening in the OIC, and you know how many resolutions have been passed as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, first up, let's see what kind of good news are we sharing with you all. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, talking about OIC. Um, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation has resolved to promote and protect common interests of member countries and support the just causes of Palestine, Kashmir, and others. Now, it was articulated in Islamabad declaration adopted at the conclusion of the two-day 48th session of the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers in Islamabad, and the OIC confirms as are through the declaration resolved to unify efforts to address common challenges and leverage opportunities besides upholding the rights and interests of Muslim minorities in non. Oh, you know what, Mahin? The, de de the declaration actually vowed to pursue a shared vision for greater social, economic, scientific, and technological development and integration within the Muslim world and beyond. And it reaffirmed the collective desire to promote harmony, tolerance, peaceful coexistence, better standards of life, human dignity, and understanding among all people. And uh, Shahzad, the declaration welcomed the operationalization of the Afghanistan Humanitarian Trust Fund. That's a huge thing, and it welcomed the unanimous decision of UN General Assembly to proclaim 15th March as International Day to combat Islamophobia, as well as the Council of Foreign Ministers' decision to appoint a special envoy in this regard. And you know what? The, that the declaration rejected terrorism in all forms and manifestations and attempts this evil to any country. religion nationality race or civilization it in fact reiterates oic's strong position against attempts to equate the legitimate struggle of people for self determination with terrorism and ladies and gentlemen obviously talking about pakistan day i think ever since growing up that one day has always been phenomenal for me and it always uh, you know gives me nostalgia and it's because of the fact that obviously now when we are working we do not get a day off but usually on 23rd march when we were going to school or universities we would have a day off and we would just run on to the roof and you know we we wanted to Uh, just gaze at all of those F-16s and fighter jets flying by exactly. as well, and, and that cultural floats. And the most amazing thing, Shahzad, about this was we uh, also saw foreign dignitaries witnessing all that uh, spectacular parade. And and it's great. And you know, talking about floats, I think uh, uh, I was not actually able to kind of complete my sentence, Mahin. But uh, uh, you know, so I always wanted to be a pilot, and um, you know, so I did kind of apply for uh, the examination as well. and imagine guess what so i had to appear in four exams i failed three 
my cousin failed all four. <laughs> and so here we are living the dream. So this was my first ever dream was to be on TV. The second dream was to be a pilot because my father even loves a lot of planes as well. But ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Imran Khan made me the president of Pakistan, the chief of army staff, everybody graced the occasion as well. And not just that, the uh, foreign ministers uh, who were here to attend the OIC the conference as well and were over things. there as well. And we did have uh, a lot of contingents from other countries or the neighboring or the partnering countries as well, which I believe was great. A great show. And uh, uh, looking at the Pakistan Day, ladies and gentlemen, the might of Pakistan forces is something which everybody should be scared of. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these missiles and bombs and tanks, we do not have them to just kind of take them out on Pakistan Day. We can, God forbid, even though that we have a very offensive strategy, we do not really want, in fact, we have a very defensive strategy, correction over here, but we really do not want to kind of get into that. But God forbid, if somebody is going to keep an evil eye on Pakistan, hey, you know what, we have something to share. And Shazad, one, uh, another thing that I would like to add that uh, such a great show uh, itself proves uh, the independent foreign policy of Pakistan that it has adopted. And really something unusual that happened was the foreign minister of China was also here. Yep. And uh, the Indian designs to isolate Pakistan has miserably failed yesterday. Exactly, and, it, and it's just great, you know. It, it, just, it just feels so wonderful to see that how our institutions have uh, developed their capacity to make sure that they protect their motherland at any cost. May it be the missiles, the tanks, and all of these technological uh, warheads we have. But then at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, at the back of it or at the front of it, we have these pe people who have this valor, courage, and they make sure every single time when it's the call for duty, they make sure that they're going to render or sacrifice their lives for the country as well. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, obviously, are you interested in cricket? Uh, I would like you to announce that. <laughs> All right, I, I would do that as well because, ladies and gentlemen, so Benu Khadir Trophy is underway away in Pakistan after 24 long years. Australia is visiting Pakistan. The third test match, which is fourth day. All right, now, uh, what, what are we talking about today? So what's well, the show about? Well, it's about uh, International TV Day. It's about letting you all know, raise awareness about what it is, uh, what causes this, what could be the impacts on community, and what treatments could we have. Exactly, and Maheen, thank you very much for giving it away, because ladies and gentlemen, today, everybody all over the world is actually observing World TB, Vianike, Tuberculosis Day as well. And it is really important for us to kind of talk about it. So imagine from the year 2000, worldwide, 1,500,000 people have lost their lives to such an illness which is curable, treatable, 100%. So then, what causes this is the question, number one. Number two, why do people fall ill? And why do you think that we have this sticker or a billboard which says that it is a disease of the lower income segment? Is that true? That's something which we want to kind of figure out as well. We will be doing a lot of myth bursting today. But first, we actually have a report to share so that you can actually be very well aware about the disease itself and the discourse of conversation. An estimated one-third of the world's population is infected with tuberculosis. One-third. And here's the culprit, the minuscule bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. But does that mean 2.3 billion people are sick? Fortunately not. Only a small proportion of them actually become sick. To understand why, let's take a closer look at the bacterium itself. When someone with TB coughs, they expel little drops of saliva that fly into the air. Some of them may contain the TB mycobacteria, which can then be inhaled by someone close by. The mycobacteria then continue their journey down the respiratory tract and into the lungs. That person is then infected with TB. And this is where it all becomes a little more complicated. The body detects the invasion and sends out its first line of defense. This includes special cells called macrophages, which engulf the mycobacteria and transport them to the lymph nodes where they are neutralized. If they're neutralized, the person will have what is called latent tuberculosis. This means they're infected with the bacterium, but they don't have active TB disease, and they're not sick. However, in 5% of cases, the immune system is overwhelmed. The TB mycobacteria multiply and escape, and the person falls ill. 
This often happens with young children whose immune systems are not fully developed. In other cases, latent TB can wake up and become active TB. This can happen months later or even years later, especially in adults with weak immune systems. For example, people who are HIV positive or who've had organ transplants or who are undergoing chemotherapy. So what happens when someone has active TB? Let's imagine the infections in the lungs, as this is the most common place. The patient starts coughing, has difficulty breathing, and suffers from chest pains. If these symptoms last for more than a few weeks and are accompanied by fever, night sweats, and weight loss, the doctor has good reason to suspect tuberculosis. The next stage is diagnosis, and then treatment. As a tuberculosis survivor, I know anyone can get TB. That's because TB is spread through the air and everyone breathes. People with TB can be found in every state. Where we work, where we live, where we learn, and where we spend time with family and friends. It's time we end stigma around TB. I am a TB survivor. 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 My daughter is a TB survivor, and it's time to end TB. And ladies and gentlemen, honestly, you know, there's nothing to be scared about and it's because of the fact that it's 100% treatable. But there's a reason why World Tuberculosis Day, Maheen, is observed on the March of 24th as well. Do you know the reason? Do you want me to share it no, with the audience? share it with the audience. Right, so back in 1882, Dr. Robert actually found out the bacterium which causes TB, which opened up ways for people to kind of figure out how we are going to cure it. But ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, some legendary doctors over here in the panel today who will be giving us their insight and how we can kind of look into it and how there are so many stigmas attached to it how people do not want anybody else to kind of know that hey you know what god forbid my son or my daughter has been suffering from tv there's nothing wrong we need to do it collectively please make That's sure you know we really, really do not exactly. need a society which is more individualistic everybody needs to come together but without any further ado ladies and gentlemen the superstars for today are over here in the studios with us. First off, ladies and gentlemen, he happens to be a public health expert. He is Dr. Ghulam Nabi Kazi. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Assalamu how are you, sir? Sir, absolutely perfect. Thank you very First much for all, joining thank us. Thank you very much for inviting us. Secondly, we're not legends yet. Sir, sir, for <laughs> us, you are legends. And, uh, you know, because I happen to be an amateur over here, you happen to be a professional. Thanks. And we certainly are looking forward to a lot of knowledgeable uh, information for people as well, which they'll be able to use in their daily life and daily routine as well. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, the Vice Chancellor for Health Services Academy, Pakistan. He is Dr. Shahzad Ali Khan. Hello, sir. Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Tom, thank you. Thank you know, you. somebody whose name is Shahzad, sir, he needs yeah, to be a legend. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, always make sure that he's going to come up with suits of such different colors, which are always going to look good on screen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The mustache always compliments him as well. He happens to be the ex-joint executive director of PIMS as well. He is Dr. Minhaj Suraj. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Hello, sir. Assalam and a very good morning. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Once you again, you're looking stunning, lovely, amazing. That's Let's get the conversation the started. So I'll uh, get the conversation started with Dr. Shahzad. Sir, obviously, we really want to talk about TB. You know, we've given away brief information which I think people will be able to understand. But let's understand what causes TB, sir. Yeah, like you, you saw, so it was a very good clip. Thank uh, you, sir. For, for anyone uh, interested in understanding TB. Uh, the first thing which I would request all of the Pakistanis to understand is uh, that although it, it is said that it is a disease of poverty, it is a disease of weakness or something like that, a lot of risk factors. But or lower segments. The most, yeah, but the most important reason for getting a TB is that you have a very high case load, the contact. So if there are too many cases of TB around, you, myself, anyone is not safe. Yeah. So even one case of TB in the family or in the, in the community or neighborhood, uh, you can't make uh, poor people rich. You can't do a lot of things, but you can definitely get that one person which is there treated. So one, one, of the, one of the commonest reasons for Pakistan is a very high prevalence of TB cases around, right. and most of them being unknown so so it doesn't carry no much diagnosis. it yeah it doesn't carry there much is diagnosis people don't share it with other yeah. people and it doesn't carry much of the you know like the diseases you have a lot of symptoms in pakistan i have seen people perfectly fit and they got diagnosed sir uh, i wanted LTB. to ask you something so we have one. yeah sorry we have more than 5000 centers public health centers where the diagnosis yeah. is free almost 
So then why so many cases? People are afraid of getting diagnosis, number one. Number two, like you said, even if they know, they don't share it. We have seen people getting diagnosis and running away. Yeah. So number one is like uh, contact with the TB. Number two is smoking causes, you know, lung damage. Yep. And you can easily get uh, TB after that. Malnutrition is one of the biggest problem in Pakistan. Exactly. And malnutrition is common in the poor, but also uh, the, the, the rich people, they, they have a tendency of getting malnourished because of eating junk food and Indeed. other things. Uh, you, 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 you have to understand the poor, uh, crowded, damp environment uh, harbors this bacteria. This bacteria likes a dampy, uh, smoggy, and a bad environment. Anyone living in that environment has a repeated, in fact, repeated, you know, uh, exposure to these. Then you have this multiple diseases, which are very common. Diabetes is very common. Diabetes yeah. makes your immunity weak. Uh, TB is also co-infected with HIV and AIDS. Uh, you get any blood disorder which re reduces immunity, like you saw the macrophages and other uh, defense mechanisms. The body defense mechanism gets down. TB bacteria in the people uh, living around uh, can infect you. So if you are if you are healthy, if you are eating good, if yep. you are uh, keeping your mouth, uh, you know, like in COVID, we used to wear the mask. mask. So then, then it's, the chances are that you will get less. Uh, so eating the eating problems, uh, micronutrient deficiencies, malnutrition, lack of immunity because of multiple issues. Although it is more in men, but interestingly, Why although the men have more because of more exposure uh, in, in occupational hazard and others, right. plus smoking and right. a lot of other things. Why, so, do you <laughs> point, why do you have to point to it when you talk about smoking? <laughs> You're the host, so I'm telling you that. Uh, okay, this, this tell will people more. that yeah. because the guru impact. guru of anti tobacco campaign is hitting with us. Yes. So, so this is something which you should understand that uh, even if you have uh, uh, these kind of uh, lifestyles, no matter whether you are rich or poor, uh, you uh, you can get uh, TB. So, what about the dormant virus that stays and that attacks when your yeah, immune so, system? So is first, let me uh, complete the first one. That when I said that women suffer more, why do women suffer more? Because the men uh, who has di has TB doesn't have to have that much of a social stigma as a, as a young girl or a woman. Mm -hmm. So the marriage gets uh, down and I think Kajisa was telling me that 2,000 divorces per year in oh India. 200,000. 200,000. 200,000. Yes. Just because of TB. Because the TB is, the moment it gets diagnosed, the people, the behavior changes. Which so is the behavior. women get divorced, not yeah. the men. So yeah. the man, if he, if you, if he gets uh, TB, he will not get the uh, the marriages got cancelled. So, so the suffering of women is more. So even with a less percentage as compared to men, although not much difference, but still the suffering is more in the women. Similarly, uh, the two extreme ages, the uh, young age, uh, child under five yep. and elderly. Both are in, both are very much prone to uh, because of low low immunity immunity system developing and other side immunity system waning. So uh, you can you can just uh, tell all that contact history malnutrition lifestyle dampy environment uh, diet extreme dieting. You know in in rich rich people I have seen uh, people who do on a very crash diet. The moment they go on a crash diet, every people around them they have this bacteria, and you have a low this immunity, and you can get that. So people should be very careful about. Even if you are dieting, you should have nutrition cover. So it's not like just stop eating everything and you will become smart. No, that will make you prone to so many diseases. And that's and that's equally important, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, you know each and every time whenever I go to the gym and you know whenever I'm on the weighing scale, sir. Yeah. So I weigh a lot, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and my trainer tells me this: Hey, you know what? That you should actually be able to kind of do your daily chores with whatever weight yes. you have, rather than it makes you lazy. Or God forbid, what people do with dieting is that they stop with the bread, they stop with the rice, they stop with all sorts of carbs. And hence, you know, so until the time they're dieting, it's good. But as soon as they leave dieting, ladies and gentlemen, they're overweight. But I'll move on to Dr. Kazi over here. So, sir, obviously, <laughs> we, we've talked about the causes. Sir has mentioned quite a few as well, where we talk about contact history, damp environment, smoke. We know how, how the, um, you know, atmosphere is around as well. True, and it obviously true. causes a lot of problems for people. But before we get into the symptoms, what I really want to ask you is that what is the condition of Pakistan? When we talk about our nation, you know, how many people suffer from this illness, how many people get treated, and how many people are interested in getting treated? True. Well, that's a lot. Uh, let's start from the first question. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, we have an incidence. That's the number of new cases per year. It's 263 per 100,000, yes, which translates to about 600,000 people per year, new cases. They add to the prevalent pool. That's a lot. Now, as Dr. Shahzad was saying, you have, if there's one person, you'll infect the rest. 
So what you need to do is identify all the new cases mm -hmm. and treat them. It's a six month regimen, so not a big deal. The issue is how do you identify the cases? Well, first of all, people don't come to the public sector so much. About 30% come. In case of TB, 60 to 65, even 70% sometimes come. That is because we give free diagnostics, free medication, and so on. But the bottom line is we are missing 200,000 cases per year. That's a lot. No, that is a disaster. We, we cannot afford that. That's an epidemic. So yeah. they're going to some private sector GP who may not know how to prescribe for TB. They may be going to quacks. We don't know. Yeah. So really, uh, those, that's the target group we are trying to get. And quite recently, we had a project of uh, locating patients from private pharmacies. We found that a lot of courses were being sold off the counter. Okay. And so no we, prescription from the doctor. The, and there you is just a go to the chemist and the chemist is like, sir, ye khalo. Yeah. There's a prescription, but now there are multi-dose combinations. Okay. So the doctors don't have much or they have to prescribe one of those. So uh, just by tracking the pharmacies, we could find about 12,000 cases in four cities alone. So it's possible that people may be getting treatment, but we have to follow them. We have to see they're cured and get them in the net. That is number one. Number two, globally, we are number fifth in the high burden countries. So in population, also we are number six, so except yeah. for the United States, the only which is a developed country. Second last, we are the second last country where polio still exists as well. So I think that the condition That's is true. a little adverse. That's true, but let's, let's look at the good things. We have eradicated smallpox. We eradicated guinea worm disease. We eliminated leprosy as a public health problem. Although the cases do come, but they are in a very low range. We like TB to do the same, to come in that low range where it ceases to be a public health problem. And when you're talking about mycobacteria, of course, I'm reminded of Dr. Ruth Fowl because she single-handedly eliminated leprosy from Pakistan. So you have a very good point there. Now the thing is we have to move fast because by 2030 we have agreed to do the sustainable development goals, Indeed. which in includes removal of ASTB and malaria from the public health list. So we have to eliminate all of them. We have to do it fast. We have to harness all the cases, treat them, cure them. Sir, and your point is valid, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, once again, I'm going to say it in English and I'm going to say it in Urdu. It's the nation which needs to come forward. It's the people who really need to come forward. Exactly. It's the people who really need to go to the doctors, look for the treatments as well. And with the safe card available now, I think everybody can get it treated. Make sure that you do not hide it because God forbid, Okay, your life is in danger. We understand that. But why are you putting somebody else's life in harm's way as well? Please don't do that. We really need to do it together to achieve all of these sustainable development goals as well and make Pakistan free from TB as well. Very quickly, moving on to Dr. Um, <laughs> you know, the king of the campaign against smoking away in Pakistan, ladies and gentlemen. So, sir, how does smoking, first of all, uh, has an impact on your lungs? Obviously, because there are two ways to it, sir. Now... Obviously, a lot of doctors say, in fact, a doctor will always say, you know, smoking is injurious for health. A lot of people even say it. I don't know whether it's medically identified or not, but obviously it can contribute to other illnesses as well. Wonderful. But now, sir, how does it kind of add on to you getting TB if you're, if you're a smoker? Thank you very much. Uh, basically, when we are talking about uh, tuberculosis, and uh, although it hurts many other uh, organs of the body like uh, your eyes and uh, uh, your bones also. So, uh, Sir, I've heard uh, only nails and hairs are not uh, infected, otherwise the otherwise. whole body is infected. So Can basically infected. when we talk about the lung diseases, uh, which are the most uh, common uh, thing observed and then uh, one of the diagnoses uh, always comes for the tuberculosis. So the smoking also damages your lungs and uh, thus there is a direct correlation and there are scientific evidences that uh, those chemicals which are found in the tobacco smoke and those chemicals they number about more than 7000. Right. These chemicals come from all those compounds which the tobacco industry 
willingly adds to the tobacco leaves when they are processed, when they are roasted, uh, just to add their uh, nicotine level, just to add their addiction. Just to add that hit. Uh, mo most of them. And then, of course, the lower the uh, uh, burning rate also, combustion rate is also. Uh, so many chemicals, when they burn together, they give you the byproducts which we identify as uh, those chemicals coming out of the smoke. Out of these 70 are carcinogenics. They are producing cancers. And the way they act in the body through uh, your lungs, they absorb into your bloodstream, wherever the organ they go, where there is a immune system deficiency or there is any other weakness, they hit your DNS. They damage your DNS and that's why they produce your cancers in every segment of the body. So thank you, thank you very much for giving us these facts as well and they are scary at the same time because God forbid ladies and gentlemen for all of those people who smoke might not even think about it. So it is our responsibility to share this information. But guess what sir, so we have another transition in terms of technology. So now from lighting a cigarette, we have moved on to vapes and yes, shishas and whatnot. Well. So do you have any information related to that as well? Yes, uh, basically the vapes uh, or the heat not burn tobacco and uh, the nicotine pouches which are available in abundance Liquid. in the large cities these days, uh, they all contain nicotine byproducts. And as, uh, as is true for the uh, conventional cigarette stick, it is also true for these uh, smoking uh, gadgets, whatever it is, that they have so many chemicals in added to them. And those chemicals, when even when their uh, vapors are inhaled, they are also damaging you. All right. so rather more than that. And most of the things now is that uh, the nicotine is not uh, uh, the conventional nicotine coming from the vegetable source. Uh, it is uh, synthetic nicotine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and true. that is mo also damaging. But sir, now, now the debate is whether smoking is more injurious for health or whether vaping. Even in fact, both of them, ladies and gentlemen, you shouldn't be doing any of them. But what is more dangerous? Okay. Uh, the vapes, uh, basically, they are having more concentration of nicotine and they are more dangerous. And so same goes for the shisha smoking. Right. Shisha smoking also has so many chemicals which uh, are more, more than 20 times dangerous than a conventional cigarette smoke. And for the user and for the non-smoker also who is uh, happen to getting that second hand smoke. So coming uh, to the direct relation of uh, smoking with the tuberculosis, uh, you see these compounds which are produced in the tobacco smoke, they also contain iron. And this iron, uh, a rough estimate uh, which is, is 1.1 microgram of iron uh, when you are smoking one pack of a cigarette per day. Right. This iron abundance in your phagocytes which are meant to uh, have uh, the main thrust of the immune system which are ha countering these uh, bacteria or viruses whatever is coming to the body uh, they get overloaded with iron All right. and that iron it multiplies that overloading multiplies the growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis in the body if you are already infected so if you are having tb and you are a smoker you are multiplying your disease by at least two to three times. So now talking about solutions, how can we reduce the consumption of tobacco? Uh, we heard uh, SAPM to Prime Minister Dr. Faisal Sultan talking about uh, increasing tax on tobacco and what else can we, do, uh, can we do because we are showing the visuals on the pack of cigarette and we are writing it in bold letters that no smoking or smoking kills. Even then there is no reduction in the consumption of tobacco. What out of the box ideas do we have to reduce the consumption? And, and sir, before you answer it because I think Maheen has raised a very important point over here because taxing all of the tobacco companies will not benefit the person who is smoking it. He will eventually still be smoking. I think it will only benefit the country's economy that the taxation is going up. How do you think that we can benefit people? Because there are other byproducts as well, sir, where we have these nicotine chewing gums as well. Do you think that they are favorable? God forbid if somebody's gotten the disease and they are a smoker, how do they kind of avoid smoking now? Basically, uh, so there are, I will answer the question first. What are the uh, ways to tackle uh, tobacco epidemic and WHO has a very important uh, six pack strategy uh, which is empower these are six uh, alphabets it starts with M P O W E R each stands for one uh, strategy to combat tobacco use All right. monitoring then prevention of people from the tobacco smoke then enforcement of the tobacco control uh, laws and uh, uh, then uh, providing assistance W is to warn people and uh, O is to offer help to quit tobacco. 
and W is to warn people, E is to enforce ban on tobacco, advertisements, promotion and sponsorship, R stands for raise taxes on tobacco. Basically, uh, the philosophy behind raising taxes is uh, leads to a uh, higher uh, price of the cigarette pack, uh, so it becomes unaffordable for a student or a boy to afford that cigarette pack. And secondly, of course, the lowest uh, middle income class, that can also avoid if the cigarette packs are too high, too pricey, too out of their reach. So many strategies in Pakistan, what we ever have been doing, the tobacco control things, most of the thing we have been trying to prevent our people. Uh, Pakistan is a tobacco growing country. Sambal is a tobacco free city, smoking free city though. Yeah, but uh, that is uh, basically one of the strategies and uh, we uh, started enforcing it in 2014 and uh, right at the moment we are uh, doing that in 12 major districts of Pakistan and those 12 districts uh, they house about 60% uh, of our population, population, the most populous cities. And we are trying to enforce tobacco laws in that kind of cities. And, and that's wonderful, sir. And we certainly want this to happen, inshallah. And since, because uh, I go to England as well and I have a home over there, so it's really very expensive to afford cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> it's 15 pound a pack, so you really have to get some from here and then kind of utilize it. In fact, we're not even endorsing smoking as well. But now, sir, Dr. Shazad, let's talk about the early symptoms. You know, there might be early symptoms. There might be weight loss, weight gain attached to tuberculosis as well. So let's talk about that. That God forbid, if there's somebody who might, he or she might not still be aware that they might have TB, what can be the earliest symptoms yeah. and how can we go to the doctor? Like I said, the textbook symptoms, all of, should, all of uh, the audience should understand that there may be no symptoms of TB in Pakistan and we have seen that, asymptomatic disease. But in majority of the cases, the three commonest symptoms of TB are prolonged coughing. So any cough of more than two weeks, we ask them to get an x-ray or test it. And every, every, every investigation for tuberculosis diagnosis mm -hmm. is free in the public sector. Even before Sehat Saulat uh, program, the TB uh, were diagnostics yeah. were free. Uh, number two is definitely low-grade fever. So if you are feeling a feverish uh, uh, some for some days, you are having cough or some breathlessness. And the third one is, in most cases, uh, specifically in women and in elderly and in the children as well, you have a weight loss. Mm -hmm. So weakness, fatigue, uh, weight loss of sudden onset for the last few weeks or months immediately gets, get tested. But the most important one not to, uh, I think, uh, not to miss okay. is cough, cough, or because it, it affects the lungs. But even if a case of uh, uh, cough for a few days and a fever and something like that, uh, one can get one one can get tested. Right. Uh, this is something which uh, which we do, and in and, and the GPs are trained in that. If someone comes there and so Im immediately he will treat or she will treat like an allergy and then maybe a little bit of chest infection, bronchitis. But if the person is not uh, feeling well within a week or two weeks. Definitely, they will revert it for diagnosis. And what is the cause of blood that comes out in the cough? Is it some kind of wound in the, the tissue of the lungs? The lung you know, lungs are a very special organ of the body where the blood gets the oxygen. So you are, you are inhaling oxygen from environment. Uh, whatever oxygen there is, <laughs> we are lucky to have been inhaling in Islamabad. True. But I'm I'm uh, very much uh, you know concerned in, uh, about with, uh, with the other, and and other yeah, yeah. So we are lucky to be, but but in majority of the cities where the pollution is high, so you get oxygen uh, through your through your breathing uh, breathing in, and where comes the blood which gets in touch with that and hemoglobin gets that yeah. oxygen, and then it then the oxygenated blood goes back to the tissues. So if the lung is damaged, that connection, that alveoli and that uh, the blood and air uh, points, they get damaged and the blood gets out of that alveoli and, and it, cause, it causes irritation. When it causes irritation inside the lung, you know, and if you inhale anything, uh, you problem. have to cuff it out. True. So you just do a forceful cuffing and small pieces of blood can come out. This is a, this can be an early symptom, but usually it comes a later stage when the lung is damaged. Normally within, within one or two months of infection, I don't think uh, the lungs are so damaged. Uh, other, uh, other than that, that it, it was a very aggressive disease or you had a very poor, uh, the load of bacteria was very high and you had a very poor response. Uh, like, like you said, disease of poverty. So in the poor, uh, malnourished, poor, resident of a crowded and a damp environment, if these symptoms are there, a GP definitely even doesn't need a test. They say that this is TB. Is and you always get a history of t t contact with TB. 
people know that there is somebody in the house who had TB or has TB. Like Kaisa mentioned, many people who have TB, they don't get a good quality treatment. So that makes, that makes the case even trickier for the GPs and for the health system because then that TB which is mis mistreated becomes a real problem, then it cannot be treated with a normal conventional drug. It becomes multi-drug resistant TB. Right. So the people who are self-medicating, the people who are giving pre prescriptions without any standard protocol, they are in enhancing the ch chances of getting drug-resistant, multi-drug-resistant tuberculosis, a very high-cost treatment, very specialized medicine, and, and, and retention in a facility, and a very high mortality. You know, TB is not just highly prevalent. True. It is highly uh, mor mortal as well. It is very, very much killing. It's one of the diseases <laughs> which is very high in prevalence and also mortality. Exactly. And I certainly, sir, want to talk about that as well. Thank you very much for saying that because, you know, that's something which we have learned in COVID times as well. Yes. You know, how we had so many different variants of it as well. And you said that, you know, it's going to stay mortal and then we might have to True. come up with a very different multi-drug uh, treatment as well, which now I think let's do a little bit of myth bursting as well, uh, <laughs> Kai Saab. And that is that, uh, first of all, this question all of a sudden pops up in my mind, you know, so NCOC closes down as well. And, you know, just yesterday, Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, that we didn't actually had a single death. Today as well. Absolutely. Today as Two well. Two days consecutive. No Two days Masha consecutive, Allah. Allah. and it's great. <laughs> so what I want to ask over here is, from 2019 till 2022 today, how come we were only talking about COVID, people weren't getting flu, people weren't getting TB, people weren't getting any other illness. It was just COVID, COVID, COVID. And to be very honest, you know, we look around, Every time you go to the doctor, I think the doctor would always ask you to get your COVID test. No TB, no nothing, no coughing, no lungs. That's a very what good question happening? indeed. Well, thank you very much for raising that. It's a very important point. True. Indeed. But let me park it for a while. There are sure, two sir. very important things that have come up sure, sir. in the discussion. First, first from Adam that it affects all organs of the body. Having said that, uh, we are concerned more about the pulmonary tuberculosis rather than extra pulmonary because pulmonary is the one which just spreads to mm. others. Having said that, you saw in this kit that one third of human population has it, is infected with the mycobacterium. True. And that is about how much? 2.3 billion. 2.3 billion. billion people. 2.3 billion people. Billion. Who has this? They have so, it. So what I'm saying is. So is it active or is it inactive? <laughs> it is there. It is, it is there. there. <laughs> but it's not affecting. It, it can, it can I become active, but it is not active nah, yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now what is happening is, where are those 2.3 billion? They're not in USA, North America. They're yeah. not in Europe. So where are they? Where are they? They're in countries Asia. like us, really? where 50 to 60 percent may be infected with the germ, without knowing it. I mean, it's a, it's so, a difficult guess. Though. So yes. we also have to do preventive treatment for latent TB. Okay. That is number one. Number two, uh, if we go towards elimination, latent TB has also to be eliminated. It cannot be eradicated because even the mummies you find from <laughs> 5000 BC, they have identified the mycobacterium so it's not going to go away. I mean, microbacteria We can just everywhere. lessen the number of patients <laughs> to a level where it's easiest to be a public health problem. Example, now yeah. coming to your point. Actually, when COVID struck in March of 2020, 2019, we had yeah, a, December. Yes, but in Pakistan, it was February or yeah, March. Yeah. So around World TB Day, actually, we were lighting the buildings and then we said, what are we doing? We should be wearing masks and do other things. Yeah. So actually, uh, when it happened, there was a panic all around which happens with every virus, new virus. So there was panic and all the routine health functions, not just TV, were at heart. all the routine health functions got paralyzed. People got locked up wherever they were. So in the first, or first two quarters of 2020, the case notification dropped and all the gains we had made over the last seven years, we lost. And then we had to, again, reevaluate where are we going. I mean, just because we have a pandemic which is killing some people, we cannot let go of cancer or diabetes or uh, tuberculosis or cardiovascular disease or other things, which are killing many, many more people. True. So you have to have a holistic approach for health. And the government was very kind enough to not have a complete lockdown. Number one, people could 
knew about the livelihoods. We were appraised so by the global community. Social health sir. protection was carried out, and then we also resumed the normal Life. health functions. That helped a great deal, and uh, we revived our case notification. Of course, what we lost, we lost. But, uh, but, but sir, still, it's mind-boggling that you know how COVID came in, and everybody forgot about every other illness. And now all of a sudden, all of these yeah. illnesses Oh, that happens. Back. You see, uh, two, three years ago, we had Zika virus. And in the US, I was there, and there was such a panic. Like, True. I don't know, tomorrow doomsday is coming or what. So oh. that happens with every new virus. And this was a pandemic, mind you. So the whole world was affected. And what was yeah. happening was that we, we, we have fragile or weak health systems. But even yeah. the strongest health systems in the I, world... I, I think we have the strongest immune systems over here. Gali sarko mein ghoom phir ke poore patang bazi gar ke mitti kha ke. It, it, it is supposed to be yes. said in Urdu, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Yes. That's the culture <laughs> of Pakistan. <laughs> but Dr. Shadal yeah. wanted to add. Yeah, you know, uh, like Kaisa mentioned, although um, uh, there are many other diseases, but there is a politics of disease as well. Okay. What is the politics of disease? If anyone is talking about a disease, it becomes talk of the town. True. So the whole world was talking about COVID, how does it spread, and how, how it will kill, and how it will take all over the world. In February 2020, 26 February, the first case in Pakistan was reported. But since then, it was like uh, like a havoc. So that is why we are here for TB, you know? Mm. When you start talking, yeah, when you start talking, when you start talking about a disease and uh, the, the magnitude and the severity and a lot of problems it creates, social, economical, medical, then it, it becomes. So that is why yeah, that is why COVID was taken ready. up because USA was talking about it, Italy. So once paid. again, it comes under the <laughs> politics of the disease yes, as well. Yes, politics of disease. Okay, sir, but very quickly because we only have last five minutes, yeah. let's quickly touch upon the treatments as well. And um, is it hundred percent curable? Is it hundred percent treatable? Uh, do we really have to be in time or God forbid if we are late and organs are damaged, uh, can we still seek help? Whoever wants to answer. Yeah, I, I, well, actually, I said, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let me go first and then yeah, you sure. can add. So, all of communicable disease control, even non-communicable disease like cancer or diabetes, what are the basic principles? Early detection, early cure. Yeah. Proof. So, the sooner you get the patient, the better, always. That is number one. Number two, for normal TB, it's six months okay. treatment. For latent TB, it's three months. For drug resistant TB, it has come down to nine months. It could be one and a half years and more, yeah, yeah, or yeah. more, depending on well, which drug you are going. susceptible to and which you are not. Or depending on that, the uh, regimen could be longer or shorter. But not to come down to nine months, which is a good thing. But as she has pointed out, the mortality rate is higher there. In normal TB, we can, we are still curing more than 90% who come to us. But not so in case of drug resistant, it is about 80, 85%. And then some are lost to follow up. Because you see the medication they're getting has mental health issues as, as well. So they might not be adhering to treatment, not mm -hmm. adhering to treatment in drug resistant TB is like, Inviting death. Sir, there are a few other complications. I've mm -hmm. uh, I've uh, come to know they are victims of TB who who go through surgeries as well. And some of them said we we have lost hearing. And you know these are some uh, long and complicated true, procedures. True. And in the middle of that, the people tend to leave the treatment yeah, altogether. I, I think that we need to understand it's not just the medicine only in TB specifically. It's a social disease. It's a socially uh, in, 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 uh, yeah entrenched disease. It's not just it cannot be treated by just medication. True. Of course, six months, but diet is very important so if you are not getting enough immunoglobulins if you're not getting proteins how will you counter those uh, bacteria inside so nutrition is very important number two uh, specifically for women and ch children and a girl child uh, social support uh, family care you know one of the reason why we did well in covid because in us the family system is not like in our case uh, if you if you got covid everybody came to see you <laughs> unlike others <laughs> although they, they got the disease yeah. but you got uh, you, you never got, got it twice you, or thrice. you never you never you never got isolated True. isolation kills you True. know in tb if you discriminate if you stigmatize it will kill more than the bacteria and can wearing the That's mask will help definitely definitely wearing the mask with everybody and it, it it doesn't it doesn't you don't you don't get tb by 
by eating together or living together. But if you are very much that the cutlery needs to be different. So, so no, 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 it's not like that. So, so, so uh, hygiene, uh, cleanliness is of, of uh, paramount importance for everybody. Nutrition is very important. Physical activity because you go out and you Breathe. exercise your lungs. People don't do that, and and over GPs they don't tell that. Okay. They will give a bolus of medicine in front of this in, in, in a shopping bag and they will say three, four in the morning and then and the patient will patient will be looking like that. I can't eat the food. I have, I have anorexia. I have uh, nausea. I have cough. Yeah. How will it, I, I eat this? So you have to give care. You have to get support to the women specifically for social support as well as you have to have good diet, physical activity and definitely time uh, uh, timely medication and don't delay the treatment it is free the earlier the better the better so very quickly moving uh, on to just uh, just to build on so very quickly we very short on time yeah because he mentioned personal hygiene you see europe yes. got rid of tb before chemotherapy came yeah we got a septum in 1945 yes. then we have tb by then Jesus. so personal hygiene yes. is very important yes Exactly. Mm -hmm. And moving on to you, Sarat Sab, so now uh, the theme this year is invest to end and save lives as well. So what will be your message on this day? Let's see where, how far will it go. I will just quickly one, uh, add one uh, Take your time, technical sir. point, and that is uh, the smoking-related uh, thing. Uh, for a tuberculosis patient, it's a red signal. If he's smoking, we will get his diagnosis missed. All right. The smoking, uh, whatever chemicals it produces in the body, they hinder the sputum for AFB testing and or even the dermatological test <laughs> that gives false results in smokers. So if somebody is, is already a smoker, so do and they kind of quit smoking first and then come for their testing? No, <laughs> if, if they uh, get uh, TB, they will not be diagnosed early. At so all? What is yeah. the so solution would be? There might be some ways. Might be micro dot or something. Some advanced test, but but that time by that time their disease must have advanced. Yeah. All right. So, so they, they, they have got to delayed be diagnosis. Careful. So what was that? I think that's, then, that's, yes. that's all we need to do as well. But thank you very much, wonderful yeah, doctors. Thank you so the much. The one sir, just sir, uh, quick message. Of, uh, this year theme is in, invest to NTB. Yeah. And that investment is only not fiscal investment. Mm -hmm. That includes political investment and that needs so administrative so. investment so. also. Exactly. Thank you very much, sir, for being uh, with just, us. Just one minute. So I'd like to say the political commitment is already there. The President of Pakistan has held two TB summits in the last two years. So that's remarkable. How much did it help? I mean, these things help us to uh, do more advocacy and things. And the President is not going to tell you every day what he be because he has so many other things on his agenda. But it took out time for two TB summits. So the commitment is there. Now we have to translate it into... And sir, we will definitely act translate actually, it, but we are very short on time. Actually, sir. budget allocations. GD sir, budget yeah. allocation. Eventually, ladies and gentlemen, it comes down to budget allocations as well. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, we really need to thank all of these wonderful human beings for taking out time, sir. Thank we are very sorry that we were short on time. Otherwise, we would have continued the conversation because the conversation is knowledgeable and it's useful for people who are out there. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do over here at P2P World. We change perspectives till the next time. Look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning.